So we're here again with Steve from the Bullion Brothers, and today he's going to show us how to use acid tests to find out if a piece of gold or silver is real gold or silver. Absolutely. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, is get our magnet out, as you saw before, and we're going to go through and we're going to look if there's any metallic qualities. Yeah. Okay, it's going to stick. Nope, it looks pretty good with the magnet. And again, if there's no reaction, that's a good sign. Correct. And if it clings to the magnet, that means there's some sort of other metal in there. Now the second tool I'm going to use is called a, a loop, a jeweler's loop. And we actually sell these as well. They're five bucks, pretty inexpensive. You can get them anywhere. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look for any markings that may be on the inside of this ring that's going to give me a good direction. So I'm going to look here. And I'm going to see a 14K. So that's a good sign. So this, this ring should be 14 karat gold. Now the reason that we use the acid test is because a lot of times what happens is jewelers aren't always the most honest of uh, business people. And I don't mean to pick on jewelers specifically. It's just that there's jewelers out there that do what we call under carroting. And uh, that's what we're going to test for. First and foremost, we're going to make sure this is gold of some kind. But a lot of times what happens is things that are stamped 14 carat are actually 12 carat or even 10 carat or even less 9 carat, uh, but at the end of the day, they are not always as uh, they appear. So that's what we're going to use the acid for. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to kind of sort these for a second here and find out what I'm working with. Looks like I got a 14 or at least stamped 14. This one here is also stamped 14, so I'm just kind of making a pile of those to to test of the same carrot. That one's also 14. Yeah, I'll let you know. 14. Oh, looks like we've got a bunch of 14. And 14 again. Now just for uh, training purposes here, I'm going to pull another piece of gold out that I happen to know to be gold uh, that's going to be a little bit of a higher carrot than what we're working with just so you guys can see uh, for at home testing purposes here. So that's a gold nugget pendant that we've got here and we're going to also show you how that shows up on the stone. So this is a small stone that we're going to use to take a sample of the gold and, uh, and then put our acid on that sample. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the ring or the piece of jewelry, whether it's a bracelet or necklace or what have you, and we're going to get a small sample. You're going to press firmly on this stone and we're going to get a little rubbing of that. Now, I don't know if the camera's getting that good, but you're going to see gold. It should show gold color. I mean, you should actually see gold color on that stone. All right. Now, what I do is I like to go in order when I'm testing multiple things at a time. I kind of have a little system here, so I'll put the ring or the piece of jewelry in order as I go on, and I'll just make lines uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One, the acid's a bit messy, and it will burn your hands. I will warn you. Uh, you should wear gloves when you're doing this. So anybody that's doing this at home, or if anybody's playing around with this for the first time, you absolutely need to wear gloves, or you will end up with burns on your hands like I have. So do try this at home, but do try it at home with the proper safety equipment, which would be gloves and eyewear, etc. So I'm going to keep these in order as I'm going through here and test. And the other reason that I keep these in order for, for me is uh, I can go through and use the acid at one time. So rather than pulling the acid out, opening it up each and every time I take a sample, I just get everything in a line here, and then I'll go one straight line of acid all the way down. So now that we've got our sample, and then I'm going to show you our, our gold nugget piece here. And I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick this up, but there's a very distinct color, uh, and it's gold, believe it or not, too. Uh, to gold, and the more pure that gold is, the more it's going to look very golden. So I don't know if you can see the difference in those lines there. The more pure your gold is, the more gold it will look. So I'm going to start off first with a 10 karat acid. So this 10 karat acid here, you can pick up uh, from a lot of the testing supply companies that are out there. Just recommend going online and grabbing one of those that, that's willing to ship for a reasonable price to your area. I'm going to take that 10 carat and I'm going to run a line all the way down and through each and every one of those samples. Now if this is 10 carat gold, 
these samples should hold up good and strong and bold. They shouldn't start to fade or dissipate. If there's any kind of bubbling or fizzing or changing of color, all of that is bad. That, that means you don't have good gold there. But if this, these lines are sharp and bold and it looks like gold and it smells like gold and it's stamped like gold, you're uh, you're working with gold most likely here so this is uh, just about as foolproof as it gets um, there's there's a few different ways that they could actually fake this process uh, but we won't get into that today and um, as long as you've done your magnet test and some of the other simple tests that we've shown you here you're uh, 9 out of 10 times going to be in really good shape here so as you can see all these lines have held up really well to the 10 karat acid so now that about a minute or 30 seconds has gone by I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the 14 karat acid and do the exact same thing and run a line down all the way through each of these samples now you'll start to see that some of these samples if you can if you can get the right light here some of these samples are starting to fade or they're not quite as bold as the 10 carat side would be what that is is again that's that under carroting so I'm, I'm glad that I kept these in order because now I can easily say okay well these two guys here actually these three guys here are obviously not pure 14 karat gold so now I've got my two rings here that have held up good and bright to that 14 karat acid so I'm gonna go ahead and buy those as if they're true 14 karat and then I've got these three here that faded just ever so slightly now that doesn't mean that they're not good and it doesn't mean they're not gold they're obviously holding up to the 10 karat they're just fading ever so slightly to the 14 karat which tells me that's actually about 13 and a half or maybe even 13 karat but it's definitely not 14 and it is definitely better than 10. So that gives me enough to work off of there to where I would feel comfortable buying those at 12 karat or even 13 karat gold. So I hope that helps you guys today and you learned something. Thanks again for watching.